Hey everybody, JB back with you once again for more CCLP3 and level 114, lead us not into temptation. And we just did just that. Anyway, um, let's actually do this the right way. This is a level that's pretty much all about red herrings. And you have to be very careful and not uh, fall for any of these little death traps here and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to try my best to remember how to do this level because... Um, I haven't actually played the intended way in a long time. There is a busted route, and you might have been able to figure that out already based on the best time there. But there is a uh, very short route that involves something very similar to the uh, Monster Lab um, bust that you might remember me mentioning from the Chips Challenge 1 Let's Play. And this right here, uh, there we go. I think that's how you do that. I'm not going to get those red keys yet until I know how many I need, and it looks like I'm going to need at least just one. So, let me get one red key. The good news is that this level isn't super long, and I pressed right! I don't know what happened there, that was really silly. Anyway, I'll show you where the busted uh, area is when we get to it. It's toward the end, but you can access it at the beginning. It just involves a lot of luck. Yeah, this is a pretty fun level. It's made by Modhoff, and I gotta say, this is the part of the set where things start to get really interesting with respect to the levels, and uh, they get pretty difficult too. So I'm probably gonna be talking a little more about each one and some of the decisions we made. But this is actually the first level that uh, Modhoff uh, included in his main set, Keyboard Wielder. And this... I'm pretty sure involves going here. Now you notice there's a chip up there. I'm actually not going to collect the chips because they're not actually necessary. So let me go back and get... Um, I need to get another fire boot. I, I happen to know that there's another fire after this. Here it is. And that's why I did not get another red key was that right there. There's a blob here, and we can avoid that. Okay, so now we get into this big area here. Now notice this construction right here. You don't actually want to collect the required ships, and that's why I haven't even been getting any. Uh, because you really want to exit out of this teleport right above me, not this one. So just keep that in mind. <coughs> Sorry if I sound a little congested today, by the way. I'm actually, I've am actually, i actually been recovering from a cold, so I haven't really been recording much lately. So this is actually the first video that I'm recording on the day I'm uploading it uh, since, I think, the first CCLP2 episode. And I'm trying to remember how to do this. Um, well, you had, to, you had to have lost the fire boots up there. Did I forget another key? No, okay, there we go. I think that's how we do that. Because I'm pretty sure over here that these will backfire on you if you try pressing those other buttons. I think. Yeah, I'm hoping that's what that is. I'm just going to go for it. Let's just see what happens here. Oh boy, that's not good. Good news is we went through there already, so... All right, here they come. They're going to totally flood this area. All right, so... Oh, I need to get that other... Ooh, uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, good. We made it. Thankfully, we can escape all the chaos, but that is a little tricky. And now we got our... Fire boots, and now that means we can go and do some filling in of water here. There's a green key under that block, which means you can go back and get all those chips there, but that's a trap. And this hint tells you that you got it. And we exited! So just for fun, let me show you the busted solution. You can probably guess what it involves doing. Yeah! It involves going through that entire corridor. 
Thankfully, this is so short that it's not really that bad as far as trying it over and over again. But still, it's annoying enough. And you can lose one move like I did there. There we go. So that's Lead Us Not to Temptation, or Loon It, as some people call it. And moving on to Triple Maze, another Pie Guy level. And a really fun one, too. Um, personally, I really like this concept. It's been duplicated in quite a few levels. But it's a really neat way to include layered mazes all in the same place. There's also a big giant dirt pie here that you can walk across, which is pretty neat. But yeah, this is a really cool concept. It's, uh, it's also kind of a notable level because in voting, one of the things that we noticed on the staff, and it, it's something that we tried to solve with CCLP1 uh, when I headed that up, was that we sorted all the levels by sets, and that's how people voted on them. The problem with that was that there were some designers like PyGuy and ModHog who tended to make pretty difficult levels. But as a result of that, whenever they made an easy level, that level tended to get a little bit of a higher average difficulty rating in the voting um, than other levels that were of similar difficulty. Just because they were made by a designer who tended to design more difficult stuff or who was well known for a, a certain difficult level. For instance, uh, Modhov had a level called Stop to Smell the Roses. It was, like I think, his second level in his set. And basically, it was a level that was meant to be like preparation for a much harder level later on. And really, all you had to do was just walk to the exit to solve it. But there were some people who actually gave it a 5 in difficulty when voting. Which, honestly, I don't really agree with that. So when CCLP1 voting came around... We actually abandoned the whole difficulty rating thing altogether, mainly just because we we wanted to just decide that as a staff anyway, especially for a set that was meant to be for beginners. And honestly, for CCL before, I'm hoping that's going to be the case as well, but it's really up to that staff to decide that. Um, but along with that, we also decided to arrange the levels into packs of randomly um, sorted levels like, they didn't really have any sort of order at all. Just so, you know, there wouldn't be any sort of, oh, this is in this part of the set, or this is designed by this designer, therefore it's, you know, supposed to be this difficulty rating or something like that. Um, you'll notice that we can go for either the suction boots or the fire boots. I'm going to go for the fire boots because you might recall from earlier, uh, or the exit was... Uh, accessible through force floor, so we need to get the fire boots second. So let me go back through the maze here. Hopefully I didn't miss any water only chips. This was a really fun uh, level to optimize as well. I'm always going to remember it as the level that broke Pi Guy's optimization streak on his own levels because I managed to get the bold time before he did. But I actually printed out a map of the entire thing and got red, green, and blue markers and uh, just drew lines and noted which chips were accessible uh, with only one boot and then kind of made a base route from that. And it was really fun to figure out. But thankfully I was able to get the optimal time from that method. I don't remember what all the chips are. I mean, obviously that one to the left is a suction-only chip. I think there's a force floor only chip and a suction only chip in the lower right area, but I could be mistaken. They're not all very obvious, by the way. Okay, there's one over there. Let me get that. I think that was the one I missed one with the water. Yeah, I, I could have gotten that at the beginning, but I didn't. I noticed it earlier when we were in that area, but I figured because I saw the uh, uh, the water next to it, or the fire next to it, that I could have gotten it with the fire. And I think with the suction boots, too. So along with what you're seeing here, there's also a, uh, a certain force floor in this area, and I'll have to find it, where you can actually walk across without the suction boots, which is pretty awesome. I'll have to see if I can locate that. The other interesting thing about this level, which is rather notable, is that we actually use this level as a cipher skip level. In other words, the next level has one of the passwords that you can find in one was um, 
on uh, replay, which was immediately after which one next. And I think Madhav was the one who came up with the idea of using those particular two levels as the levels that could be skipped first. The third one was level 144, uh, mainly because the last cipher always points to the bonus levels. Um, and not to mention that level 144 is ridiculous. But, um, but yeah, personally, I wouldn't have chosen those two in hindsight, um, mainly just because they're not really that difficult. I mean, which one next is mainly just tedious, and it's not like people will really run out of time on that. And this level, I mean, theoretically, I suppose someone could get lost in this, but it's really not that hard. Still, I think it was Madhav who said that he almost ran out of time on this. Frankly, I think he would be in the minority on that. Okay, just watch. I'm saying that now, and I'm probably going to run out of time on this. Because I'm not able to find my way around this, apparently. Oh, it was right here the whole time? Really? Okay, see, that's just... Yeah. That's annoying. Okay, there's the suction only ship right there. Okay, and here's that force floor. You can just go right through there, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so at this point, let's make the switch to suction boots and get... Uh, let's get this. Oh, that's a dead end. This is a very well-designed maze as far as dead ends go, which is really neat because, I mean, theoretically... Not all of them would be dead ends, you know, if you left certain chips there. It just so happened that I tried to get all the chips I could get with, or almost all the chips I could get with the water um, configuration. And here's this one. But I need to get to that one way over there. And I'm pretty sure the path is fairly long, and that's by design. The other fun thing to figure out was calculating for each of the uh, little areas that weren't along the uh, required quote-unquote paths. So in other words, you know, the, in order to get to one of these essential chips that uh, is in an area accessible with only one boot or something, you know, like those were the priority chips when I mapped out the route, but then there's always these areas that you wouldn't necessarily have to pass through. There weren't many, but there were enough that it made the level really interesting to optimize and calculate. Alright, so that's all the ships, so we should be free to go back to the exits, and I really don't even remember where we went, but I'm just guessing. I think this is right, though. It looks like this is right so far. As long as I don't make a misstep here, we should be a-okay, and we made it. Triple maze complete. Alright, so moving on to mini challenges. This is a level by... Ida Robertson, and it's actually the third level in a series of levels that were titled Mini Challenges. Uh, and I thought I boosted there, but apparently I didn't get the boost. That was weird. But this is a really cool concept. It's Essentially, it's a series of three tile-wide areas, um, which is really cool. And in that area, the solution in links is a little bit tougher, but really cool to figure out. But yeah, I really like this idea for a level. In fact, I even made my own version of it called Mini Challenges World Tour as part of a create competition on CC Zone. And it used the walls, um, conf the wall configuration from, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, Block Slide in CCLB2. Okay, I'm not going to take any chances with this. I'm just going to, uh oh. No, no, no. Okay, good. Please drown. Please drown. There you go. Thankfully, that's not too bad to optimize. It's just a one in four chance, but still. Okay, so you don't want to open up those red doors there, but you only need to use two keys, so just do that because you need to save these red keys for later. See, there's a lot of little traps and um, things to watch out for here, like this little fireball cloning area. And this tanky area. And this blob area. We actually had to change this area for the actual set because I want to say this involved some kind of weird behavior originally. I forgot I forgot exactly what, but it was interesting. I, I do recall that. 
And I don't think we can actually extract this. We just we can just do that. This, however, is a little bit different. So we need to ferry this bug over here, blow up that bomb, and now we get something rather interesting and really irritating to optimize. Because in the uh, in the bold route for this level, you actually have to use the mouse and flick off uh, blocks off the of thin walls. That is really tough. And I don't think you can even make any mistakes, if I remember correctly. So it's partial post there. One thing I've been wondering is where the term partial post... I mean, I know where it came from as far as the level goes, but how that term even got invented for the level. I mean, why is it called partial post? I've never understood that. All right, so I'm going to go back this way. We got both keys, so we should be able to make this. Get the green key, and then we just have two chips left in this paramecium room. And we can exit. So that's mini challenges complete. Moving on to, oh boy, mice are good for something. Okay, this level. This is a bold time that has been eluding me, and I still don't know how to get it. I'm like eight seconds off, which for a block pushing level is quite a bit. Because normally I'm pretty good at figuring out these block pushing levels, but this one involves a rather unique gimmick. Um, in that you need to get these thin wall or these recessed walls used wisely. And you can even do some things with these that are interesting. Like you can actually, um, let's see, I'm actually going to go and do this. I'm going to, you can actually m extract multiple blocks at once in some of these cases, like the one I'm about to do here. There aren't really many of these, but like here, I can push this here, but I've got another block there, so I can turn that around. And then I've got this block in position to just push it back here like this. The tricky thing about optimizing a level like this is that you actually have to bring the blocks back more often than not instead of doing fancy things within the little maze. At least that's what I've been noticing so far, um, because that actually saves time since you're going back there to retrieve another block. So I really don't know exactly what the bold route involves. And yes, this is made by Pie Guy. And those are blocks of traps underneath them, so we can't use those. We have to use the blocks that comprise this mouse here. Okay, and I'm going to use these to just get this out of here. All right, so let me get a few more. And there's a bunch here on the tail. I'm pretty sure I've optimized the mouse area because that area is pretty straightforward for optimization. Uh, just going to go ahead and do these one at a time still. There's this whole loop area here with this teleport and everything. I'm not really going to use that much, uh, mainly because I'm doing some time-saving stuff here with the, the recessed walls. But uh, yeah, this, that's basically all this level is. I'm personally not really the biggest fan of it. It's an interesting idea. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I love the concept. It's just really tedious. So I'm gonna just start using these guys. And because it's really tedious, it's really annoying to try to find more seconds on it. Okay, so now we can start tackling the tail here. Um, I'm definitely going to circle around and get this one, so let's do that. Ultimately, we're trying to bridge to a thief because we need to get rid of our skates in order to uh, dodge that ball in the exit area. So yeah, this, uh, this series of levels here, this is really where the game starts to get pretty difficult. It hasn't gone to insane, crazy difficulty yet, but this is where our ordering decisions as far as um, what order we put the levels in and all that, this is where we started to go, okay, we really need to make sure we do this right. And to be honest, I think we were a little bit more concerned about you know, how the levels looked and what they had instead of just how long they were and how they played. And that really wasn't the best way to do things. 
because as you'll see here in a little while, we had a whole bunch of levels that were like all together, like in the next decade and in the 130s, uh, especially where there's a bunch of long levels in a row, like a lot of long levels in a row. And it's really exhausting to play them all in a row. So um, I, rec I realized this once I saw Rock Genaru uh, attempt to, to let's play CCLP3. And when you're recording this and you don't know how to solve these levels, it's very, very difficult um, to solve them in a reasonable time and still make an interesting video. Now, of course, most of the world doesn't LP, but I think a similar rule applies to casual gameplay. I mean, you really want to feel like you're making progress. And it's really hard to feel like you're making progress when all you're feeling is just this tedium of going through levels a few hours at a time where, you know, several hours pass and you're on another level and you've, you're just going at this slow, turtle-like pace. You know, it's just really, really annoying. So... That was one of the things that we tried to be a little more mindful of when we did CCLP1 was that we actually organized levels by length and we, we tried to avoid putting a bunch of long levels in a row. We didn't always succeed at that and you know we may not have always properly gauged what a long level was, but I think we did a little bit of a better job with that than we did with this set. Because this set just has so many long levels. And they're good levels. They're just long. That, that's the thing. Uh, okay, let me use this one. I was just kind of going on autopilot there, and I didn't even think about whether I'd be able to get out of that room. But thankfully, we have one more pop-up wall left. Two blocks left. So we are going to have to do something a little bit different for the last one, but not too different. Um, where's the... Oh, wait, I think I know what I need to do for the last one. Let me see, is it here in the nose area? No? Did I do this wrong earlier? Did I seriously mess that up? Oh, you've got to be kidding. Hang on a sec. Yep, I'm pretty sure I messed that up. I was supposed to push, okay, I was looking at the editor, I was supposed to push this up, or excuse me, this up, and then get stuff over here, and ah, uh, alright, let's try it again, I took a little bit of a break there, just to cool off for a minute, but this is what I missed, I was supposed to do this, then that, that was, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I did that. All right, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because, I mean, this is so long. Of all the levels to get stuck on, it had to be this one. I told myself before this recording session, okay, mice are good for something is coming up. I had to be prepared for this. And I, t I missed the most obvious thing ever. And I just, it's what happens when you talk and you don't even think about stuff. Uh, oh, well. So how have you guys been? Like, like I said earlier, I've been sick and everything, but it's funny when you're sick because, like, for me, I, I feel like I've struggled in the past with just kind of, like, slinking away and just not doing anything when I'm sick and not trying to get better, you know, by being active or doing something like that. I just kind of lay around in bed and be like, oh, I can't do stuff and whatever. So this time around, I think I tried to do a little too much. I, I tried to spend some time with friends and a bunch of other things, and I, I, I actually spent some time with people in between naps on Saturday when I was trying to get better, and I mean, I didn't have like crazy high fevers and stuff like that. It was just, you know, I, I, feel like the, I felt like the cold was not that horrible, so, and now I'm saying that my voice is cracking, so <laughs> probably not the best thing to say. Um... But yeah, it was it was good, but I feel like it kind of slowed down my ability to get better. So next time, I think I'm going to actually try to take a day to just rest. And I actually ended up doing that today. I, I worked at home today. Thankfully, my, my job is uh, mobile enough that I can do that on certain days. I mean, normally I wouldn't do that because I really need to be there for people. But, you know, thankfully, I'm 
my boss is really flexible and really nice and um, a lot of the stuff I do is online anyway so I was able to just get a lot of stuff done as it was um, and not spread my germs around the office which was good I'm sure some people appreciated that but I don't think I was really that contagious mainly just because I had been on the downside of the or the downward you, you know what I mean. I My brain's not working right now. I'm probably not going to record something after this because, honestly, this is... I, I need to get my voice rested up. I tried running today. Like, that was good. Um, I, I was kind of nervous about doing that because I'm like, okay, this might slow down things even more. But, I mean, everything was just coming out. and I had a runny nose and everything this morning. That was actually the main reason why I stayed home is because I... I didn't want to clutter up my desk with Kleenex and all this stuff. I mean, I have a garbage can, but really, though, it's it's kind of a little bit obnoxious to hear this sound, you know, if you're sitting next to me. So, and the more I did it, the more I got a headache and the more I couldn't concentrate there. So, a quieter area was definitely much appreciated. But it's, it's, it's been nice because I haven't really gotten sick much since I moved up here to Colorado. I mean, there have been a couple of times, but overall, like, I was expecting when snow came around and the weather was crazy, I was expecting to get really sick around then, but it actually hasn't been those times that have been the worst. It's actually the times when it gets warmer uh, where I, I've tended to get sick more, or at least when it's not super cold. So that, that's been really interesting. But yeah, work's been going pretty well. I... I feel like I've gotten more or less connected to people here, which has been... It, it feels good to be connected to, to people. Like, I always felt like in Texas, and this this is going to sound really mean, and I don't mean it as a mean thing, trust me. But in Texas, I, uh, I always felt like I would always be moving away one day. And because of that, it, it always felt like it was a lot harder to get motivated to know people because in my mind I thought, well... I don't want to have to leave them after developing this friendship, and then it would be much harder. So I'm just going to go and, you know, spend time with people, but put in minimal effort. And that sounds really bad. And really, it kind of is. Um, and, I, and to be honest, I did have good friends there. But I always just felt this, oh, I can't, I don't want to hurt them when I move away, so I, I really shouldn't get to know them well. And really, it was kind of a selfish thing. That That's really not a good attitude to have. You know, you can still get to know people and invest in them, even if you do leave. I mean, there's no guarantee, for instance, that I'll be here in Colorado for the rest of my life. I mean, I think I'll be here for quite a while. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting, though, because ever since I moved here, I've felt a lot more intentionality when it comes to getting to know people. Um which has been a good feeling to have. And it's been nice to, you know, pursue life with that kind of intentionality within me, mainly just because, you know, a lot of people have, you know, noticed it. And, you know, I, I don't do this just to get, you know, reactions from people or anything like that. I mean, that's totally not the reason at all. But it is nice to hear, you know, really positive things from people, particularly about things that I thought that I would never grow up to do very well. I, I know that sounds really bizarre, but for instance, one of the issues that I had a lot of struggles with back in college was giving people space. And I think much of that just had to do with the fact that I was this overachiever and I had no concept of personal space um, because I never grew up with any siblings. So, you know, relationships to me back then were these kinds of, you know, challenges in a way. And, you know, I thought, well, you know, I'm being friendly, so therefore I'm doing everything right, which really wasn't the right attitude to have. Um, and so eventually I had to learn, no, you know, you actually have to be mindful of people and their needs and their space. And you can't just, you know, say, oh, because I got good intentions, therefore I've got this made and, you know, what they think doesn't matter. And recently, I had a friend come up to me, and, and she was like, thank you for giving me space when I didn't feel like talking to you, and you know, or anybody else for that matter. And I was like, I did that? 
like I, I couldn't believe that I did that. Like I wasn't even trying to do that. I, it was just kind of a natural thing. But it was really encouraging to hear those words because I never thought I would be good at giving people space. I mean, I never thought that anyone would be saying things like that to me. And that was a really terrible teeth handling there. Um, but anyway, it, it was it's just really neat to hear those things from friends and other folks. Okay, there we go. That's a little more like it. I know there's probably an easier way to do this, but anyway. This level is called Obstacle Course, and it's a really fun level. It's a level I made. Um, hang on. There we go. It's a level I made back in, oh, I'm going to have to get these down here. Okay, there we go. That's not really the, the ideal way to do it, but that's one way to do it. Um, it was a level I made back in 2008, I think, 2008 or 9. And it was actually sort of inspired by an escape level that had the same name. Um, and at least the first little area with those blocks was, and the last area in the challenge it involves is as well. But it's meant to look like a sort of series of obstacles that you have to go through. Okay, but yeah, the challenges are totally CC related, which is kind of fun. Okay, now that the bug will go into the trap button, and now we get to hear that ticking sound. So this room here, this is really cool. So you're going to get all these blocks out, and once again, I totally use block checkerboards shamelessly. I know. I, I really need to be more creative than that. I will say, whenever I make levels for CC2, I'm planning to do something a little more adventurous than just using block checkerboards. All right, so you'll notice here, um, hopefully I did this right. Oh, I'm actually wasted a block. Oops. Okay. Well, normally you would solve this room and you'd have one block uh, left over. And you'd think that you cooked the level, but you really didn't. What you're supposed to figure out is that you can go back here to the starting area and get another block from this part. That was the part that was really inspired by the escape level that was named Obstacle Course. I thought that was such a cool concept, like going back to an earlier room to get something, that I just had to include it in a level. And it's not even unfair at all. I mean, you might restart the level if you think that you just totally failed and give up, and that may be a little frustrating, but I love this idea, and because of it, it still remains one of my favorite levels I've made. And I'm, I'm not trying to, you know... I feel bad for saying that because I feel like I'm just boasting or something, but I'm, I'm really not. I'm trying not to. Like it's, I mean, there's to, there's better levels out there, but as far as the levels I've designed, like this is probably one of my favorites. Oh, by the way, um, Tyler Sontag uh, informed me that his level um, that was renamed to Jumble, you know, the first Jumble in the set wasn't originally titled Nuts and or Bolts and Nuts. That was a title that he gave it after CCLP3 was released. Instead, it was actually originally titled uh, Obstacle Course, but we decided to use that title for this level since it actually looked more like an obstacle course. Anyway, I'm going to pick up with this level next time. I'm just going to go ahead and end the video here because I don't want to strain my voice anymore. and I'm really tired after that run and after just blowing my nose and everything all day today. So hopefully tomorrow I'll feel a little bit better and you know, be able to record a little bit more. So hopefully we can pick things up then. But as for tonight, I'm just going to go ahead and just upload this video and see what happens. So I'll catch you guys next time, and hopefully we can get more levels done then. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the flip side.